Hello, this is Hui. Welcome to watch my video C++ Programming on Linux. In this short video, we are going to discuss inter-process mechanism using Boost C++ libraries. Boost C++ library inter-process mechanism is designed for sharing information between processes. As we know, application on Linux usually has multiple processes running at the same time. So in order to share the information between processes, we have several options. First, two processes can share information using a file. In this method, we can create a file and one process can write data into the file and another process is able to read the data from the file. In this way, a special synchronization algorithm may require to design for make sure writing date first and the reading after in order to keep the date unique. Another way two processes can share the information using memory that resides in the kernel of operating system. For example, the traditional message queue. A third way, we are using two processes to share the information using a memory region, like a classical shared memory or memory map file. In this way, once the process set up the memory region, each process can read write the date like any other memory segment reading write without calling the operating system kernels. In this short video, we'll focus how to create a shared memory and how two process can read write data from this shared memory without using calling operating system kernels. By the way, the Boost C++ library inter-process mechanism not only for process, but also works with thread. And the thread can be in the same process, and the thread can be in different process. Here on the Linux, we create one program called Create Shared Memory, and another program is Open Shared Memory. The Create Shared Memory will be created and allocated a memory, which is able to share by another process. So the header file is manage shared memory dot hpp. So the class we're using to create a segment of shared memory is a manager shared memory. In this we create a segment with three parameters. First is action, which we can use to create only. And the second, we need a name. I just name my shared memory. And the third is the size. How many bytes of this segment? We just use the 65536 and uh, we can design in different based on the application. And uh, in order to not to make a program fail in the exception, before we run the create segment, usually we have to use a shared memory object remove, which is my shared memory. This is cleaning before we create. After we create a segment, we can use a segment allocate which by size of memory. This is similar as we allocate local memory. The only thing is the size have to be available. To get available free memory, we can use a segment get free memory called free memory before and the value is the available memory we can allocate it. Usually the size have to be smaller than this value. So we use the segment to get free memory again after we allocate and we just print out free memory before, free memory after and the difference between free memory before and after to demonstrate how the allocation memory works. So after we did the segment allocation, the pointer, which is the point of the memory, that's able to share by another process. To be able to share by another process, we have to get the handle, which uses segment get handle from the address, which address is the pointer of shared memory. Now our memory is ready to read write. So what we do, we create a very simple loop. Each loop, we use the stdcin gate line to get option. Then the option, we have the write, read, and exit. When the write selected, we Use the stdcin gate line to get the data into the buffer, which is our local memory. And after we read the line, we just use the memory copy to copy our buffer into our shared memory. So this write means write data into shared memory. 
if we select the option is read, which is just print out the shared memory and exit, which is exit from loop, exit from the program. For the program is open shared memory. Program use engine is the program name and the handle, which handle we get from the create shared memory program. So first, we still use the same header file, manage shared memory.hpp. So the class is use shared memory segment. Because this time is open only, so we don't need to remove before. Segment has already created. The name is my shared memory. And we get handle is initialized with zero. And we get handle from the argument one, which is from the command line. Put this in the string stream and string in handle. So the value of handle is the handle of shared memory. And we use segment get address from handle and the return is a pointer. Point the shared memory, which is the same as we use create shared memory program. So the application doing it here is the same as other program. We have option is the write, read, and exit. We get the option using get line method. So if we select the write, which is we get the message into the buffer, which is our local memory, and we memory copy the buffer into our shared memory. And our shared memory pointer use the get address from handle. And if a read is selected, we just print out our shared memory. Make files. In this program to compiling, we need a library, boost system, we need a P thread and the RT. Our lab RT is the real-time extension. Now we save our files. So we compile our program. So our program got compiled. In order to test our program, we create two terminals. So we first this terminal, we run the create shared memory. So when we create a shared memory, we can see our before we allocate our free memory is 65312. After we allocate 1024 byte of memory, our free memory became 64272. The difference is 1040. And the handle of the shared memory is 240. So you open shared memory, we need a handle 240. So now we have two processes running on two terminals. This is called open shared memory, this create shared memory. So first in this program, we choose write. So now we can write information in our shared memory. So so our message is this is we test the information to share the memory. So now our program write this message into our shared memory. This process is using the same shared memory of this process. So we use read, see this shared memory of this process is this is the we test the information to share the memory. So this is exactly the same when we use this process. If we choose the write, from this program. So we say so this is the rewrite test information to shared memory. So now we write this into shared memory of this process. And then we go to this process, choose read. You can see this is the rewrite test shared memory to shared memory. So exactly the same, we write this and we read from this. As we see, because of the link of these two process is a shared memory. So reading and writing this memory is directly like we reading write local memory without invoke the operating system kernels. So this is a fast way to communicate between two processes. As we say at the beginning, and the two processes can share the information using a file. In previous video, we made an example to write a date into a file. So this is a write a date into JSON file we call it my test.j. So in this case, we write a date into the JSON files. So this is the date we write into the JSON file. So now we can use another process to read this JSON file. You can see we get the date like a 
order ID 1001 and ID 1001 the wonder name Starbucks Toronto wonder name is Starbucks Toronto and we have three items 501 502 503 and item 501 502 503 this is the way we share the information using a file the advantage of this way which is uh, information in the file system um, exists until the file has been deleted in one of our previous video we made a demo how to use a message queue to communicate between two processes in that case we can create a message queue sender and the message queue receive so these two terminals this is a sender this is receive from the sender so in this case this message when we send to the message queue and this process which you read from the message queue this is the way user memory reside or locate in the kernel of operating system using message queue to communicate between process we have to check our limit to check the message queue limit we can use in the command u limit unix limit and the menu hp which is the p and the menu hq so here you can see the limit of my message queue is 819200 and the size of message queue is 8 it means our message queue is a maximum handle 8 message and the maximum size of message queue is 819200 in your application you have to check how your setup of your operating system hello this is Hui thanks to watch my video hopefully this is useful enjoyable it's going to be great to have your feedback